then only a high in the low. Percent off this six piece sectional, seven ninety nine after twenty percent off, or choose two years no interest and Kane's free lifetime guarantee. Hurry, the two or twenty sale ends Monday. Kane's quality so good, it's guaranteed for life. Mark your calendars for February 28th for the start of the Florida Strawberry Festival. See award-winning entertainment, including Blake Shelton of NBC's The Voice. Live from the News Center in high definition, this is News Channel 8 on your side today. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to News Channel 8 Today. I'm Rod Carter. I'm Natalie Shepard. Today is Friday, March 1st. Happening right now, a man is trapped in a sinkhole that opened up right under his home. This is a live picture from Eagle 8 flying over the scene right now. On the ground, we have live team coverage, including the very latest on the search and rescue and reaction from neighbors forced to evacuate their homes. We're going to get to that, but right now, let's get a check on our forecast from Storm Team 8 meteorologist Lee Spann. And a cool down is on the way for us. Certainly is. Cold conditions coming in from the north, really creating a gorgeous sky right now. Cloud formations over the St. Leo University. Look at this. It's absolutely gorgeous. Those are some stratocumulus clouds. It's 50 degrees, though, with a north wind at 11 miles per hour. And you can see those winds bringing in cloud cover right now off the Gulf of Mexico. It's 48, a little chilly in Lakeland right now, 53 in Tampa, 44 in Homosassa. Sarasota, you're at 59 degrees, so it is cool and breezy, 57 degrees at 9 a.m. 60 degrees with more clouds than we saw yesterday at lunchtime, and then only a high in the low 60s. So it's gonna be cooling quickly with cloud cover through the evening. Now let's check in on the roadways this morning. How's it looking, Leslie? <laughs> Well, so much for a perfect drive in Pinellas County, folks. Currently, right now, we've got crews on the scene out here where these wires are down. They're very low hanging. They're blocking some of the roadway. And this is actually on 4th Street, right around 78th Avenue North. So this particular area is blocked off. Now, what you can do is you can take 9th Street instead of 4th Street through this area. It's not too far away from Gandhi either direction. That'll probably ease your commute for the morning. That's a look at the roadways. Back to news. All right, thanks, Leslie. Now let's get straight to that breaking news, very latest out of Hillsborough County. Right now, a man is trapped in a sinkhole. It opened up inside a home on Faithway Drive. That's in the Sefner area, just east of Parsons Avenue. News Channel 8's Adrian Patterson is live on the scene with the very latest on the search for this man. Adrian. Rod, what happened here is really just tough to imagine. 36-year-old man sleeping inside in his bed around 11 when the ground just starts sinking in and they haven't seen him or heard from him since now. Here's some new information I just got. Now, we know several other people were in the home with him at the time. They're doing okay. One of those people, his aunt, she says she heard him screaming and then she was able to get out. So let's take a closer look at the home here. As you can see, there are really no signs that there's a sinkhole inside. The walls are still up. If you're driving by, if the caution tape wasn't here, you wouldn't know anything was wrong. I want to go ahead and show you some video we shot when we got here earlier in the morning a few hours ago and tell you how this all unfolded. They said they got the 911 call around 11 last night. Now, when the first deputy arrived on the scene, he did see someone struggling. He tried to get that guy out of the hole, and he actually was able to. Listen to how that all went down. He couldn't understand what was going on uh, because the mattress, the bed, everything was actually going down in the hole where the first person had gone and now the second person is in the hole trying to save the first and, and they're not being successful. So he, he basically just reacted and did what he had to do to get that person out. The deputy did save one of those guys' life inside there. He's actually the brother of the one who is trapped inside now, was able to save him. But at that point, he couldn't see or hear from that 36-year-old man who is trapped. Right now, it's really just kind of a hurry up and wait. You know, investigators can't get too close because this sinkhole is unpredictable. So they're staying back right now, trying to see when they can go up there. Guys. And Adrian, I understand the engineering firm that was out there, Bracken Engineering, had to leave because they lost equipment and because it's so dangerous and they're coming back later this morning. 
Exactly. Some of their equipment was swallowed up, so they're really just going back trying to reassess what happened. It'll also be easier once it's daylight out here. You know, a lot of the investigators walking around with flashlights. So once time goes by, it will be a little bit easier to really assess the situation and find out exactly where we stand. All right, Adrian, thank you for that update. Eagle 8 uh, pilot Judd Chapin is flying over that home right now to uh, give us a better sight. And Judd, wh what are you seeing up there right now? Natalie, right now, you, as Adrian was saying, you look at the house, you really can't tell anything's going on except for the flashing lights that surround it, the tape. But in the backyard, we see men with flashlights looking around the house, uh, moving back and forth, um, trying to, I, I would assume from what we're seeing, that they're looking to see if the sinkhole is actually progressing outside the walls of the house. Uh, it's still fairly dark out here, as you can see in the picture. This, as the sun comes up, we're going to get a much better idea of what is going on because all the activity is in the backyard right now, Natalie. All right, okay, thanks, Judd. And again, one man is trapped inside that structure. The Hillsborough County Fire Rescue hasn't been able to get inside just yet to search for that man. Our team coverage of this story continues with reaction from neighbors who are talking about evacuating because of that sinkhole. News Channel 8's Chip Osowski is live. And Chip, very tense situation, I'm sure, for those people wondering what's going to happen to their homes. Absolutely, Natalie, and authorities have evacuated the two homes on either side of the sinkhole home. Right now, it looks like the sinkhole may be moving towards that tan house. Power crews have cut the electricity off to that structure. A major concern, obviously, is that the hole will expand. People who live in this neighborhood have spent the morning watching, waiting, and wondering. Dozens stood around as rescue crews waited to get the all clear to go into that home but they never got it. I did speak with one nearby resident who's lived in this area for decades. He's concerned, obviously, about his own home. What's going on? What? Oh, that's all everybody I'm doing is walking around. I'm concerned about my house. It grows, it ain't gonna grow, and I have to leave or what? You would too, everybody would. You see it every day on the TV, all these sinkholes. What they do to their house? They're gone, ain't they? And people worried about them, right? And back out live, you can see the deputies are checking out this home. The sinkhole is right underneath it. It appears that, that it is about 100 feet wide and at least 50 feet deep, but it is directly under that house. At this point, it's not clear exactly when authorities are going to be able to get into that house. They're hoping, rescue crews are hoping, that they'll be able to get in there and find out if the man trapped inside is still alive. Natalie? And I'm sure it'll be helpful when it gets light out because then they'll at least be able to see what they're dealing with. Well, absolutely. It's been dark and dangerous out here. And now that we're getting daylight, it's going to be a little bit easier for, for crews to see exactly what they're dealing with in the dark. You know, it's very difficult to see if, you know, exactly where the ground is, you know, maybe, you know, not exactly safe to step on. So obviously daylight is going to be a big help in this operation. All right. Thanks a lot, Chip. And you can follow this breaking story all morning on the homepage of WFLA.com. This morning, Citizens Property Insurance is dealing with a new embarrassment. An internal review shows 474 employee complaints dating back to 2008. The cases include fraud allegations, harassing behavior, sexual favoritism, and the list goes on and on. One case claimed a corporate credit card was used for alcohol and a strip club. Citizen says it's making necessary improvements. The governor says he's disappointed in Citizen's management. They need to review their travel policies. They shouldn't have a per diem any higher than what state workers have. They shouldn't be reimbursing uh, any employees and board members for alcohol. Uh, they, need, they need to look at making sure the only policies are in there are policies that should be in there. The bottom line is Governor Scott says Citizens needs to clean up its act. We've also learned Citizens customers will likely see a rate increase during the legislative session that starts Tuesday. Citizens rate increases are capped at 10% per year. However, many customers are paying 30% less than what private companies would charge. President Obama is urging the Supreme Court to overturn California's same-sex marriage ban. That's new this morning. 
In the legal brief, the administration says that same-sex marriage should be allowed in, allowed to resume in California where it was banned in 2008. The filing does not call for marriage equality, but it does point the court in that direction. President Obama's position, if adopted by the court, would likely result in same-sex marriage becoming legal in California and seven other states. Jack Lew is our new Treasury Secretary. Vice President Biden administered the oath of office yesterday as President Obama and Lew's family looked on. But Lew won't have any time to settle into the new position. He will be part of today's negotiations to reverse spending cuts set to take effect at midnight. A week-long manhunt for a gunman who opened fire on the Las Vegas Strip is now over. Los Angeles police arrested the person they say shot into a Maserati, killing the driver, causing a crash that claimed two other lives. Los Angeles police have 26-year-old Amar Harris in custody this morning. Aspiring rapper Kenneth Wayne Cherry Jr. was one of the people killed in that Vegas shooting. U.S. Army Private Bradley Manning has pleaded guilty to multiple charges linked to the biggest leak of government documents in U.S. history. The 25-year-old Manning left a Fort Meade court yesterday shortly after a judge accepted 10 of his 12 guilty pleas. He faces a maximum of 20 years in prison. Manning maintained his innocence on the most serious of the charges, though, aiding the enemy. Well, an historic event in Vatican City. Roman Catholics now are without a pope. And now the question is, who may be the next pontiff and when will that conclave begin? Also, the man nicknamed the worm wiggled his way into North Korea. Why Dennis Rodman traveled there. That's coming up in a minute. It's 641. And we've got an accident out on the Collier Parkway. We've also got some low hanging wires in St. Pete. I've got all the details coming up with your true speed traffic. The sun is just beginning to come up this morning. You can see some extra clouds around and it's cool for the kids hanging out at the bus stop this morning around 55 degrees plus a breeze from the northwest and the clouds are really going to come in today. So a high of only 63 degrees and don't forget to listen to Storm Teammates forecast on News Radio 970 WFLA and I'll be back to let you know just how cold it is going to get this weekend. It's 641 and you're watching News Channel 8 today. Facebook, become a fan of News Channel 8. Search it on your side. I'm Robert Palmer, president of RP Funding. As a direct mortgage lender, we set our own rules so you can count on three things. Zero lender fees, an easy on-time process, and the guaranteed lowest rate. Visit rpfunding.com or call today. Hey, y'all, I'm Paula Dean. And people that really know me know that my favorite recipes are going to start with chicken. Springer Mountain Farms is the chicken that's always juicy, tender, and full of flavor. So gather your family and friends around the table and show them how much you love them. American Humane Certified. Raised without antibiotics. Pure Springer Mountain Farms chicken. Now that's good chicken, y'all. It's the main event.